Did you know there was a Black Series 3.75 inch line? No. Well, there was. Until Walmart killed it. Well, that's just great. Actually, the entire first wave of the revived Vintage Collection line was repacked Black Series 3.75 inch figures, some of which were still available in stores when the first wave of the TVC was released. That's brilliant, Harry. Brilliant. But some of those old Black Series 3.75 inch figures are actually worth some money. <laughs> That's right, Ace. So let's go check them out. Let's go. Welcome to CKC. I'm Matt. And if you like Star Wars and Star Wars collecting, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, like this video, and hold on to your butts. What's up, everybody? I hope your toy collecting is going swimmingly. Today, we're doing something slightly different. I'm going to start making some videos of some other toy lines, and today, we're doing the 3.75-inch Black Series line. Do you remember when there was a 3.75-inch Black Series line? You remember, right after they canceled the TVC? What a great idea that was. You know what my favorite part of the Black Series 3.75-inch line was? Bubbles that literally slid right off the card. Oh, that and horrible paint apps. Yeah, I love that stuff. The Black Series was Star Wars transition into 6-inch figures, which was risky at the time. So Hasbro had the Black Series 3.75-inch line accompany the release of the 6-inch line to throw a 3.75-inch collectors a bone, and just in case the 6-inch line completely bombed. The 3.75-inch line was eventually given to Walmart as an exclusive line, who, surprisingly I know, due to horrible distribution and overall complete BS, resulted in the line's cancellation. Not surprisingly, some of the old TVC figures were repacked in this line, and conversely, a lot of the Black Series 3.75 seven five inch figures from the sequel trilogy were repacked into the revived TVC line with little to zero updates to them. But before we start the list, I want to thank BanthaSkull.com for a lot of the pictures used in this video. They're a great place to get your Star Wars figure news, and they have a huge database of old Star Wars figures. There's a link in the description of this video in case you want to go check them out. And finally, if you don't already, please check out my Instagram page for all kinds of action figure news, sales, pre-orders, and in-stock info. You need to know when a hard-to-find figure's in stock? I got that info. Did you miss all those Walmart exclusive Rex restocks? I had that info. How about the Imperial Crosshair restocks? I had that too. What about the Target exclusive Droids figures second set of pre-orders? I had that too. What about the Best Buy exclusive Credit Collection Moff Gideon pre-orders that just happened the other day? I had that too. Maybe you should follow me. I mean, help me help you. It's linked in the description. So, without further delay, let's check out the list. But first, honorable mentions. Honorable. The Blue Line number 15, Commander Thorn. 45 bucks. Commander Thorn was one of three clone troopers released in the Black Series 3.75 inch line from season 6 of the Clone Wars, and the last one of the three to be released, dropping towards the end of the second wave of the blue line. He's really just a repainted and retooled Captain Rex, with a new head sculpt and a new left arm, with a ridiculously obnoxious antenna coming off of it. Hasbro's previous 3.75 inch figure line, the TVC, had removable helmets, even swappable heads. So you would think that Hasbro's new line would at the very least have removable helmets, right? Nope. Helmet's not removable, but honestly not as big of an issue for Captain Thorn as it would be for a figure like Captain Rex. Hint, hint. Thorn also has the dreaded plastic molded comma around his waist, drastically reducing his leg's range of motion, which is actually also a problem with his head. Even though it's a ball joint, you can't move it very easily. His paint apps also vary between figures, as some of them have nice sharp paint jobs, and others much more on the sloppy side. Not only that, he lacks the chain gun from his Clone Wars episode, which most likely would have helped collectors overlook the figure's other noticeable drawbacks, and, let's face it, would have made the figure pretty badass. So it's still a decent figure, and worth picking up if you can get it for a good price. Number 10, the blue line, number 9, Captain Rex. 45 bucks. Oh man, don't get me started on this one. This one was disappointing then, and even more disappointing now, as it was repacked in the vintage collection. Repaints and repacks were a common thing during the Black Series 3.75 inch releases, and surprise surprise, still are today, but this Captain Rex was one of the lucky figures in the Black Series 3.75 inch line to actually get a new mold. Being that he's so incredibly popular, and rightfully so, a super articulated Rex was in high demand. So naturally, Hasbro made collectors wait for it, which definitely added to most people people's disappointment when the figure was finally released. Unfortunately, the figure was average at best in 2015 and is straight up laughable as a TVC release in 2021. Not only that, the audacity on the part of Hasbro by trying to re-release this figure by just putting it in shiny new packaging is downright insulting. Like I said, not many of the Black Series 3.75 inch line were new molds, but Rex was going to be. And with the popularity of the character and the high level of anticipation for the figure, because it took Hasbro so damn long to finally release it, Hasbro Hasbro had a chance to do something great, but instead, we got a new mold for a clone trooper that was already outdone by a vastly superior mold in the original run of the TVC four years before. Ball-jointed hips? Nope. 
Soft goods comma so he can articulate his legs? Nope. Removable helmet? Nope. These things were all available and used four years prior to this figure, but now we don't get them with a brand new mold of the most popular clone trooper of all time. Okay, so with a regular clone trooper, we don't really need a removable helmet, but Rex was always shown with his helmet off, and his iconic blonde hair is a major part of his character. And now, six years later, Hasbro takes this tangible pile of disappointment, slaps it into a TVC packaging, and we're supposed to be okay with it? For shame. Number nine. The Orange Line number one Padme Amidala, 45 bucks. So there were a lot of fails, a lot, during the 3.75 inch Black Series experiment, including the packaging itself. Bubbles aren't supposed to just slide off of the card, but this Padme figure is not one of them. One of the shining bright spots of the entire line, there aren't many negative things you can say about this figure. And being the first Black Series 3.75 inch figure released, it fooled us into thinking Hasbro would actually put some effort into these figures. Her outfit itself is pretty spot on, as Hasbro elected to use an entirely new mold, including her upper torso, in order to nail the diagonal tear in her shirt. And what is this? I see, they were also spot on with her abs, which really gives the figure a lifelike appearance. Hasbro also elected to change the white of her outfit to a dirtier cream color, which is more screen accurate than the pure white her outfit had been in previous figures. And those lacerations on her back look pretty painful as well. The head sculpt is decent enough for the pre-photo real tech era. I don't know if it looks like Natalie Portman, but it does look like a woman with brown hair, and the articulation is great with this figure, and she really stands easily by herself. Being a no mold, they could have given her ball jointed wrists and hips, but she does have ball jointed everything else, including her torso. A great figure to start the line with, which definitely lessened the blow of killing off the TVC. Too bad Hasbro didn't give the rest of the line as much attention and detail as this one. Number 8. The Blue Line Number 3 Revenge of the Sith Darth Vader. 60 bucks. First of all, I hate that there's differences between the Revenge of the Sith, the A New Hope, and the Rogue One Vaders. At the very least, the A New Hope and the Rogue One Vaders should be identical, since I doubt he changed his outfit in the six seconds between the events of each movie. In fact, the TVC Rogue One Vader actually looks more like the Vader in A New Hope than he looks like the Vader in Rogue One. So, because of all this nonsense, I'm actually grouping the Revenge of the Sith, the A New Hope, and the Rogue One Vaders together, although technically there are slight differences between them, which I'm not going to address here. At the very least, the light on his chest plate is green in all three of those movies. Hasbro released a lot of Darth Vaders during the run of the Black Series 3.75 inch line, five of them to be exact. But the Blue Line Revenge of the Sith Vader is not only the most expensive, but also the best of the bunch. In fact, to this day, this may be the best 3.75 inch Revenge of the Sith Rogue One or A New Hope Darth Vader Hasbro has ever released. And yes, even better than the Rogue One TVC Darth Vader from last year. But we'll open that bag in a minute. Now, this Vader is an update of the Orange Line number 26 in New Hope Vader, which would have been the best Revenge of the Sith to a New Hope Vader, with ball jointed everything, not to mention rocker ankles, except for one thing the head would not stay on. That's right, they gave Vader all the articulation a collector could ask for, but the head would pop off even if you looked at the figure. So this is an update to that fiasco with the same articulation, but the head actually stays on this time, making this the best articulated 3.75 inch Revenge of the Sith to a New Hope Vader Hasbro has ever released. However, it is not the best looking 3.75 inch Revenge of the Sith to a New Hope Vader Hasbro has released. That one would be the Rogue One TVC Vader number 178. The detail and the paint apps on that one are definitely superior than the Black Series 3.75 inch one, and although the Rogue One TVC Vader has a serious amount of articulation, Vader's lower robe is a molded plastic, which limits what would have been wide-ranging articulation. So articulation, better on the Black Series version, actual aesthetics, better on the Rogue One TVC version. But really the only way you could upgrade the Black Series Revenge of the Sith Vader would be to include a lightsaber hilt and a belt clip. Why Hasbro doesn't include these things in their 3.75 inch Darth Vaders is well beyond me. Anyway, very good figure, very hard to find, and even harder to find for a good price. Number 7. Orange Line Number 10 Pablo Jill. 65 bucks. Originally planned to be part of the Legacy Collection Droid Factory line, which was to promote the theatrical 3D release of Attack of the Clones, Pablo Jill, along with some other figures, ended up being released in the Black Series 3.75 inch line after Disney purchased Lucasfilm and canceled the Legacy Collection Droid Factory line altogether. But some Legacy Collection Droid Factory carded Pablo Jills ended up hitting discount stores, and if you were lucky enough to find one, it's worth over a hundred bucks today. Say what you will about Attack of the Clones, and I will. It was great for not only getting a glimpse of some other lesser-known Jedi, but also for some awesome creature design. Pablo Jill 
is only one of those things. And it's not awesome creature design. Be that as it may, he was both a Jedi and a unique design. So it wasn't long until his aftermarket price started to rise. Six seconds of screen time be damned. The mold itself, especially the head sculpt, are actually pretty good, along with the coloring, which is much more screen accurate than Hasbro's last attempt at Pablo in 2004. He has a decent amount of articulation, but it's almost all for naught due to his wonky legs. They're just weirdly shaped, which takes away some of the poses he should be able to do. The figure is really saved by the addition of rocker ankles, which broadens his articulation a little bit more, and you can see from the pictures you can pose him in some decent enough lifelike positions. But he, just like many of the 3.75 inch Jedi released during this time frame, which we have discussed in the TVC as well, suffers from the ridiculously fitting soft goods robe, a problem that only recently Hasbro has corrected. And Pablo really needs his robe because he looks like a freak without it. But all in all, it's a decent enough figure, and you have to love the release of some background Jedi. Number 6. The Orange Line, number 20, Bastilla Shan. 65 bucks. Expanded universe figures have never really received enough attention from Hasbro, and Bastilla Shan from the Knights of the Old Republic game is no different. It actually took her winning the 2009 Toy Fair fan vote to become a figure, and be released during the original run of the TVC in 2011. But because Hasbro is Hasbro, a case assortment mishap caused her TVC release to get lost in the shuffle behind the Revenge of the Jedi carded releases, and was impossible to find. That TVC release will run you over a hundred bucks today. So, the figure was repacked in the first wave of the 3.75 inch Black Series line with some minor changes, let's say. I don't want to call them upgrades or improvements, because all of them didn't make the figure better. One thing they did correct was the massive space between her eyes in the original TVC release. Her eyes were way too far apart in the TVC release, and it really looked awkward, so they fixed that to make her look more natural. But they also changed her eyes from blue to brown, which is the wrong eye color. I'm pretty sure Bastilla Shan's eyes were blue, so it was probably a cost-cutting decision. They also changed the color of her outfit to a more accurate brown color, as it was a more dark burgundy on the TVC figure. But wow, the paint apps. Dear lord, the paint apps. The paint apps on the Black Series release were at best hit or miss. I've seen good ones and I've seen terrible ones, but mostly terrible. Which unfortunately is the case for a lot of figures in this line. So she's a pretty good figure overall. So if you need one, the Black Series version is the much cheaper option. Number 5. The Blue Line, number 5, Starkiller Galen Merrick. 75 bucks. If there's one figure that's noticeably missing from the Black Series 6 inch line, it's Starkiller. The fact that he has yet to be released in the 6 inch line is a crime against humanity. But just like Bastilla Shan, Starkiller from The Force Unleashed 2 is a repack from the TVC of a figure that was impossible to obtain. Not only that, the Black Series release is also significantly cheaper than his TVC counterpart, which could run you over 200 bucks right now. And also, like Bastilla Shan, the TVC release is a much better offering than the Black Series version. Vader's Apprentice comes with a shockingly high high 10 accessories, which makes it possible for him to recreate two different costumes from the game. And the mold itself was good, particularly for the time, although he does have swivel jointed waist and hips. And the head sculpt's likeness to Sam Whitmer, who voices the character, was pretty good for the pre photo real tech era. Until the Black Series 3.75 inch line release, that is. Not only are the paint apps garbage on the Black Series release, they gave him Spock eyebrows. Hey Hasbro. Wrong IP, dude. So it's very readily apparent which version you're holding when you're holding one. But we are dealing with Hasbro, so you knew they'd find a way to ruin an awesome release. Anyway, the Black Series release is the much cheaper option, so it would be the logical choice if you're in the market for one. You see what I did there? Logical. Spock. Ha. Huh. Number four. The Orange Line, number 18, Darth Plagueis. 75 bucks. Did you ever hear the tragedy of the Darth Plagueis the Wise figure? I thought not. It's not a story Hasbro would tell you. Anyway, I've never been happy with Darth Plagueis' design. I don't think he should have been immune. They just don't look menacing enough for such an ominous and infamous character with a legendarily dark history. You would think he'd be a bit more intimidating. I mean, look at this guy. He looks ridiculous. He's not quite on the TVC Snoke's level, but close. He really just looks like a crackhead. I think I gave Darth Plagueis my change outside of 7-Eleven the other day. And because he's so thin, Hasbro really had their work cut out for them in trying to make a lightsaber wielding Sith. What I will say is that with the soft goods robe on and the accessories, he looks pretty good. And it's one of the only times, and maybe the only time, that the soft goods robe doesn't look absolutely ridiculous on one of Hasbro's 3.75 inch figures back then. But Plagueis' biggest problem is his articulation. Lightsaber wielders need great articulation in order to hit those fighting poses. But Plagueis' is seriously suspect. Not only does he have swivel hips, but he has no waist joint at all. Not a swivel waist. No waist joint 
at all, which makes it almost impossible for him to wield his lightsaber realistically. Not to mention, he also leans to the side. It's also almost impossible for him to keep his breathing mask on, and even if you get it on, even more impossible for it to stay on straight. He looks decent enough on the card though, but the figure itself is pretty rough. Although I'd love to see what Hasbro would do in a 6 inch Black Series release of Dark Plagueis. Number 3, The Orange Line Number 31 Republic Trooper. 100 bucks. A Black Series release with a strange history, The Republic Trooper from the Old Republic is another repack from the TVC, but it's also one of the best 3.75 inch figures Hasbro has ever released. So of course, because it's Hasbro, it was almost impossible to get. The TVC version itself was difficult to get, and collectors were calling for a repack. Hasbro actually scheduled it for a Black Series 3.75 inch Phase 1 release until it was abruptly cancelled, along with several other planned Black Series 3.75 inch figures, because unfortunately, giving collectors what they're asking for isn't generally in Hasbro's marketing strategy. So because of the cancelled Black Series release, collectors thought their second chance of the figure was over until about two to three years later when it started to show up for sale on eBay. It was then determined that the figure, and I'm not making this up, had been available through the website of an Italian sports newspaper after an online subscription to said newspaper. You just can't make this stuff up. I'm 100% serious. A story like that's gotta be true. So Star Wars collectors know, Italian sports fans, yes. I don't have to tell you that that's absolutely insane. It then started to show up in some stores in Europe, but was never released in the US. The figure itself is one of Hasbro's best. His articulation is great overall. He does unfortunately have swivel jointed hips, but he also does have a ball jointed waist. His accessories are off the charts, coming with a bandolier slash pauldron combo, ammo cartridge, a knife with a working sheath, blaster with a working holster, a friggin cannon, and a removable helmet, which reveals a head sculpt with a nice likeness to Jace Malcolm. Both the TVC and the Black Series releases will cost you a pretty penny, although the Black Series is slightly cheaper. However, the Republic Trooper recently won a fan vote for the TVC re-release, so if you're in the market for one, you're better off waiting for that and getting it for $13.99 than dropping over $100 right now. Number 2, the Blue Line Toys R Us exclusive Battle on Endor set, $140. At first glance, this may seem like an awesome multi-pack, but unfortunately, it turned out to be maybe the laziest exclusive Hasbro Star Wars has ever released. Back in 2012, Hasbro pitched the idea of a similar Battle on Endor exclusive to Kmart, who rightfully passed on the suggestion, which then turned into the Kmart exclusive TVC ATST, the Kmart exclusive Ewok Scouts, and the Kmart exclusive Endor ATST Crew special action figure sets. Due to the success of the Kmart TVC exclusives, Hasbro's lack of creativity Activity, and potentially being a pet project of a Hasbro higher-up, which is complete speculation on my part, Hasbro resurrected the Battle on Endor idea in the Black Series 3.75 inch line and suckered Toys R Us into taking it on as an exclusive. I have to admit that in the packaging it really looks cool. However, inside is a bunch of repacks of lesser quality than the original releases. And yes, that's correct, there is not one new figure or new mold in the entire set. The only saving grace is the slightly updated TVC ATST, which unlike the original TVC release can actually stand up on its own. And by stand, I mean it can stand in one position only, the standard upright forward facing regular position, which is one more position than the original TVC release could stand in. Here are some of the highlights from the set. We have the vintage Saga Collection Endor Leia in poncho, without the poncho or the helmet, and an off-centered face, along with some additional horrible paint apps. We have the TVC VC62 Endor Han in trench coat, without the trench coat, the TVC version of which had a great head sculpt for the time that now not only looks like he has a lazy eye, but also he looks like he was partially melted from the heat of the Death Star explosion, the TVC 3-pack Chewbacca, which isn't that bad, except for the fact that he has a head sculpt from A New Hope instead of Return of the Jedi, and my personal favorite, the Ewoks who helped Chewie Walker Jack the ATST, Stemzy and Chubray, are obviously not Stemzy and Chubray. They're not even the right colors. In fact, both of the included Ewoks have been released by Hasbro before in the Toys R Us exclusive Ewok 5-pack, so Hasbro Hasbro knows which Ewoks they are. That means that someone over at Hasbro literally just said fuck it and knowingly included the wrong two Ewoks, one of which is actually from Marvel Comics. All of that on top of the fact that they were charging a hundred bucks for a box of repacked crap. So personally, I'm still baffled as why it didn't sell. If you have any ideas, let me know. Number one. The 2015 San Diego Comic-Con Toys R Us exclusive Jabba's Rancor Pit. 225 bucks. 
After the Battle on Endor debacle, I'm surprised Toys R Us trusted Hasbro with another Black Series 3.75 inch exclusive, but they did, and it was available at Toys R Us after the San Diego Comic Con of that year. And guess what? It was just as bad as the Battle on Endor set? You'd think that, right? But no. It was much better, as Hasbro addressed many of the problems that besmirched the indoor set. First, it came with the figure from a new mold. Shocking, I know. Which was actually the scaled-down version of the 6-inch Black Series Jabba the Hutt figure, with a much more screen-accurate paint job and articulation than any of the previous 3.75-inch Jabba's Hasbro had released. The Rancor was an updated version of the Legacy Collection Rancor with Luke release, with an updated paint job and tighter joints, making it much easier to not only pose, but to have it stay in that pose, which was a problem with the earlier release. And it included four TVC-quality figures, with much better paint apps than not only the Endor exclusive, but the entire Black Series 3.75 inch line for the most part. In fact, some of the paint apps are better than the first release of the TVC figures themselves. I know, I can't believe that either. The price point was a little high for the time, 130 bucks, but the sets dropped to about 80 bucks and maybe even down to 60 on clearance at Toys R Us stores. I know I picked mine up for 80, I think it got a little lower than that as well. And even to this day, I still think it looks cool. So that's the list, but I'd like to add one more release quickly, and it's the Entertainment Earth exclusive Astromech Droid 6 pack, which is technically a Black Series 3.75 inch release, so I have to mention it, but I didn't include it because I don't really consider it Black Series 3.75 inch. It wasn't really popular, it retailed for an insane $80, and you can grab it now for about 60 bucks on eBay and I think even Amazon. But when this thing was selling at retail, they couldn't even get rid of it at 30 bucks a pop. I never picked it up because it didn't do anything for me personally, but it does include some moderately cool astromechs, including Jabba's bartender, Zero the Hutt's droid, and the droid in Moss Eisley before the special editions edited him out. Anyway, what do you guys think of the list? What did you think of the line overall? Were you disappointed in the quality of the line and or the paint apps while it was being released? What did you think when the TVC was cancelled? Did you even collect the 3.75 inch Black Series line? Do you have any of the figures? Which ones do you have? What other videos would you like to see? I'm always taking suggestions. I have more videos on the way soon, so stay tuned. And thanks for watching guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And happy hunting out there.